name is Wilf Stevenson. I'm a member of the House of Lords in the United Kingdom, and I have a wide interest in various aspects of legislation to do with business, but also with culture. But my reason for being interviewed today is because I have hypospadias, and I've had since I was born. It's a condition that's probably mainly genetic, although it seems to be increasing in incidence, and we don't know why that is. So at the moment, in the United Kingdom, probably about one in 150 boys are born with this condition, which also affects girls too, but it's less obvious and less noticeable. I didn't know I had the condition until I was speaking to a doctor about when I was about age 30. So for the whole of my adolescence and early adulthood, I had to conceal my difference, the, the fact that I wasn't the same as others, because I felt very difficult about that. And um, it was only when I was about 30, 35, I realized that, that I was not alone, that there were others in the same condition, that it was becoming well recognized that those people with hypospadias had difficulty in forming relationships, had difficulty making friendships, and difficulty in engaging with the normal normality all the conditions of life. So I, for instance, found it very difficult to get undressed in a public changing room. I didn't want to do sport in case I was exposed in that way and all that sort of stuff. So a really difficult time. You have a, a saying which is on your visiting cards and I was struck by that nobody is shameful. That was reminded me that my mother used to say that to me when I was growing up. And that she, the way she expressed it was that there is nothing to be ashamed of of the human body. And of course that's true, but there's an irony there because she knew I had hypospadias because uh, my grandfather brought me into the world and there must have been discussions about what happened. But she never discussed that with me, never ever until she, and, and she's now dead, and so we can't have that conversation. But I wish she had put into practice what she'd said. There is a role for legislation in this area, particularly for instance, for those who've been involved in intersex, where I think that medical advances have not supported by legislative change. So for instance in debating the same-sex marriage bill there wasn't a space for those who had yet to declare which sex they wished to uh, be considered and therefore we do need to revisit this and think this through in participation of those people who have got the condition so that we come up with an equitable solution. The problems that I've experienced I think are lack of knowledge and in particular lack of information from your parents. So if I have any message for parents it is to tell your children about what is to talk to them about it, to explain what the issues are, and to take the journey with them as they were going through various medical uh, investigations and stuff. But also make sure that the child has a right to express his, or in some cases her, interests here. At age one or two, the child cannot be involved. But as they get older and they understand what the situation is, then they should be involved and should be encouraged to be so. And my message to the medical profession is that there are is a tendency, certainly in the United Kingdom, to operate first and to consider that how that operation is affecting people later. I think that's wrong. I think we need to spend a lot more time discussing with the patient, and that means the child, what will happen as a result of the operation, and involve them in the process, because that's the only way that justice can be